And it's a beautiful day to worship our Lord together. Let me read something for you. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Let's worship the Lord together today. Thank you for being here. If you're a guest, my name is Brady Wood. I'm the pastor here. And today we're just going to lift high the name of Jesus. We're going to worship him. We're going to hear his word together and allow God to do a work in us. So if you would, let's open up this service in a word of prayer. If you would, just bow your heads as we pray. Father, thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be a living sacrifice, pleasing unto you. Lord, may we be that type, type, type of sacrifice today. Lord, forgive us of our sin. Lord, we confess our sins to you. We know you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. God, we come into this holy place today. We want to be holy as God, you are holy. And Lord, we want to worship you as the resurrected King of kings and Lord of lords. And so, Jesus, we ask for you to do a mighty work in here today. Holy Spirit, move us, change us, speak to us, God. Prepare our hearts for this time of worship. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. morning. Would you stand to your feet as we worship our Lord together? I'll fly away. conference this last weekend last week it was such a powerful time together i tell you brother holly miller he just brought us the word and he fed my soul he fed my spirit and i know he did the same for you if you missed any of that i want you to know you can go back on our facebook page or our youtube page you can access both of those from our church website and uh, you can go and watch any of those messages from the revival or the prophecy conference. I plan on watching them again because there was just so much. I, I'm going to have to watch them five or six times to get it all. It was so good. So I know you can do that. And, and you can share those with people. If you need to share that one of those messages with somebody, let them know about it. Send it to them. But Miss Betty, come on up here. Share with us about the happy card, would you? Good morning. I think everybody is familiar with our happy card. We go every Friday and 
take cold drinks and snacks to the teachers at Middle Valley Elementary. Um, it's a wonderful ministry. And as it started out with just cold drinks and nice baked goods and snacks, it has become so much more. We've been able to supply um, Walmart gift cards and money that y'all have so generously donated that I have gone and turned into Walmart gift cards so they can help children who have real needs. Um, we've been able to help people at Christmas time. We help seven families, I think, at Christmas time. So our ministry has developed, and we're so proud of it. Um, Things got kind of changed around because of COVID, like everything else did, and we weren't able to go, but we remained faithful. Um, Pleasant Grove took them cookies every Friday. They wouldn't let me go in the door, but um, we took cookies every week and to let them know that we loved them and missed them. So now we're back in the building, and um, if y'all want to go with me sometimes, let me know, because Happy Card is good for the soul. It's a very, very, it's a, they're so happy to see us, and we might be even happier to see them. But anyway, we've decided that we're going to go back to homemade baked goods instead of um, cookies from a bakery. They will still need to be uh, individually wrapped. But if anybody wants to volunteer to make cookies or some pound cake or some yummy baked good, that would be wonderful. Um, and if call me, find me if you want to go with me too, because it is a wonderful ministry. Thanks so much. Thank you, Betty. Thank you. Wonderful ministry. Uh, Betty does a great job leading that. Linda Horner helps her every week as well. And so if you want to be involved in that, see Betty and just let her know. That maybe if you want to go sometime or really to make some of those baked goods that we can send their way. And listen, you know that they are strict if they wouldn't let Betty get through those doors. Because <laughs> Betty has a way of getting through doors, I'm telling you. Well, guess what? The doors are back open. So we're back in there. Uh, I also want to ask Justin, that we have one more announcement. I want to ask Justin to come up here. He has got an announcement for, for the youth ministry, so if you'd come on. And then we'll get back to singing. It's a great day we're having today. Uh, let's enjoy God's Word. Uh, so on the 17th of October, we're going to go up to Flat Top Mountain. And uh, they have a farm up there that has uh, pumpkin patch, corn maze, and hayride. So um, we're gonna go. We're gonna meet after the service. Uh, we're gonna enjoy the service at 10:30 a.m. And then we'll have uh, lunch afterwards. And then after we eat lunch, we'll leave promptly. Uh, we'll have transportation for anybody that needs it. And any parents that want to go with their children, they are more than welcome to come. Admission is $10. They'll ha they have uh, uh, zinnia flowers, if you've ever seen those. They have sunflower fields as well. Um, nine different types of pumpkins and an eight-acre corn maze that we'll probably get lost in. So, <laughs> uh, uh, we, we're uh, looking forward to it and have a fun time and uh, fellowship together. So come join us. Thank you, Justin. Thanks a lot. So that is, what, did you say Sunday, October 17th? Sunday, October 17th. So right after the service. So if you've got any teenagers, any youth, uh, get them here. It'll be a great time together as we do that. So, well, listen, let's just go ahead and stand together. I don't want to uh, lead us in another. Oh, oh, oh. Go ahead and sit back down. I did it again. I did it again. I get so excited, I forget about the offering sometimes. Let me get my ushers to come up. Let me get my ushers to come up at this time. As they come up, we'll take up the offering this morning, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll keep on singing together. Brother Bill, come up here, brother. Why don't you lead us in a prayer? Thank you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you again for this opportunity, this freedom we have to come worship in your house. Thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. And Lord, you know the, uh, what's going on in our country now. We just ask that you would help us, Lord, that you would strengthen us, Lord, during these turbulent times. And thy will be done. And now I ask, Holy Spirit, protect us, keep us from evil, from those that would seek to harm us. We ask that you bless the giver and the offering. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
we continue worship this morning. earth and then we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This morning we want to sing of the goodness of God.
Dan, thank you for that praise team. Caroline, for that just a worshipful song. If you would turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 11. So take your Bible, the Gospel of John, chapter 11. And today we continue as we study through the Gospel of John together. Two weeks ago we began in this long chapter that describes for us this great sign miracle that Jesus performed. And today, we, this is the seventh. This is the final sign miracle. This is, in a sense, the greatest sign miracle in the Gospel of John that we come to. They've been just increasingly getting powerful and more powerful and more powerful. And today we see Jesus is going to resurrect. He's going to resuscitate. He's going to raise from the dead Lazarus, who has been dead. And so I want you to begin with me, starting in verse 14. That's where we're going to begin at. And today's message is about how to grow in your believing. How to grow in your believing. Look with me, starting there in verse 15. It says, Jesus says this. Actually, let's start in verse 14. He says, so Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. So let me just pick, let me just get us back to where we're at here. It's been a couple weeks. Lazarus and his family, they're close friends with Jesus. Lazarus has two sisters, Martha and Mary. Lazarus was sick. They sent word to Jesus, who was away from their town, a messenger to Jesus saying, Jesus, Lazarus is sick. Come and help. And Jesus says, I'm going to wait a few days before I go. So before Jesus leaves to come to Bethany, where Lazarus is at, where his sisters are, before Jesus even leaves to go, Lazarus has died. And Jesus knows it. And so in verse 14, Jesus said, told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And then he says in verse 15, I'm glad for you that I wasn't there so that you may believe. But let's go to him. Then Thomas called twins, said to his fellow disciples, let's go to so that we may die with him. Jesus has been under great attack. And pressure has been mounting to do away with Jesus. To kill Jesus. And the disciples say, you, were, you, have just, you just escaped that area and we're going to go back there, Thomas says. We know Thomas says doubting Thomas at the end of the Gospel of John. But I tell you, when you see it here, at least Thomas had the courage to say, hey, we're going to go with you. And he said, we believe we know what's going to happen when we get there. You're going to be killed and we'll be killed with you. But Jesus says in verse 15, did you see it? He says, I'm glad for you that I wasn't there. He wasn't glad that Lazarus died and the family was going through such grieving. But he says, I'm glad that I wasn't there for this reason. To his disciples, so that you may believe. Today we're going to talk about how Jesus calls us and he desires for us to grow. He desires for us to grow in our believing, our believing in him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we ask that you would bless and honor the word that we're going to study together today. And Lord, I hope that you would just help us to see our need to grow in our believing, that that's what you have called us to do. God, your will be done today, and it's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. I want you to turn with me to Mark chapter 9. Hold your place there in John, but I want you to see something in Mark chapter 9. I want to give you an illustration from the Bible that's going to help us see what's going on here. In Mark chapter 9, there is a man who has a son, and his son has been demon-possessed ever since he's been a little boy. And he's dealt with the terrors of being possessed. 
and under attack by demons. And in verse 20, it says, So they brought the boy to him when the spirit saw him. It immediately threw the boy into convulsions. He fell to the ground and rolled over, foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening to him? Jesus asked his father. From childhood, he said. And, and many times it has thrown him into fire or water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. So this father, he said, Jesus, Jesus, help us. Help my son who's been under attack by this demon in his life all these years. Jesus said to him in verse 23, if you can, you're asking me if I can help him, if you, if you can, Jesus says everything is possible for the one who, what's he say? For the one who believes. Now look at this. This is what I want you to see. Immediately, the father of the boy cried out, I do believe, help my unbelief. He said, I do believe, but help my unbelief. I would tell you today that many of us in this room, we would say, I do believe. The question is, are you able to recognize, as this father did, that you still need help in your believing? You would say, I do believe, but let me tell you, God, help my unbelief. Today, I want us to see that Jesus desires to grow us in our believing. We need to be like this father who says, Jesus, I do believe, but God, help my unbelief. Help me grow in my believing in you. And we see it here in this story in the Gospel of John chapter 11. Well, here's what I want you to see. I first want you to see that you need to have a past believing. Have a past believing. The past believing that we all have or that we all need to have is a belief that leads unto salvation. What the Bible tells us is that the moment you believe by faith in Jesus Christ, repenting of your sins, you are saved and you're brought into a relationship with with Jesus. It says in Romans chapter 5 verse 1, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When you first believe in Jesus by faith, the Bible says you are saved, you are justified. That means you're brought into a right relationship with God Almighty. Because of our sin, the wrath of God should be poured out upon us. But because of the goodness of Jesus and his love, Jesus died on the cross to take the wrath, our the wrath that we deserve, upon himself. And through the cross, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, he says, all who believe in me by faith, repenting of your sins, you are justified, you are, you are credited his righteousness, in the courtroom of God, in the courtroom of God, God says, you have been set free. I no longer hold your sin against you because my son has paid it all. See, I have a past believing. When I was six years old, I was sitting in my home church. I was sitting out there in the pew. And my dad, who was the pastor, he gave the invitation at the end of the message. And he said, anyone that needs to believe in Jesus Christ for salvation, you can come forward today, repenting of your sins and place your faith and trust in him, and you will be set free. You will be saved. We stood up. I turned around to my brother who was sitting in the pew behind me because the, the preacher, my dad, said, get somebody, ask somebody to come with you if you, if you, need, the, if you need some help. I, 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 I went back to my brother's 14 years older than me. So I was six. I'm not good at math. I'm not going to do it right now. But there he was. And I said, would you come with me? He got me. And I walked up front. And I said, today I'm trusting in Jesus. Friend, it was right there at that moment that I was saved. God saved me. 
I was justified by the faith that I placed in Jesus according to the blood that Jesus shed on the cross for me. I was set free by the Lord Jesus Christ. See, there's a past believing that I had. I began to believe in Jesus and I was saved. See, Martha believed in Jesus. Look at this in verse uh, in verse 25, verse 25 of John 11, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Here's what Martha said. Yes, Lord, she told him, I believe you are the Messiah, the son of God who comes into the world. See, Martha had a believing. She had a past believing. She, she believed what we need to believe. She believed that Jesus is Lord. What's that mean? Jesus is master. Jesus is Lord of all. Have you surrendered to the lordship of Jesus Christ? Or are you so prideful in here today that you would say nobody and nothing can ever be master over me? Uh, that would be a popular thing today, wouldn't it? That, that's the kind of society we live in. Nobody can have authority over me. I do what I want to do. I say what I want to say. And that's just the bottom line. Friend, God has called us to humble ourselves and to surrender ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We are to say, Jesus, you are my master. That's what she says here. She says, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I believe. Lord, you are the Lord. You are the master she goes on to say that you are the Messiah. I believe you are the Messiah. That is, you are the anointed one. You are the Christ. She's saying you are the Savior. Jesus is not only Lord, but Jesus is also Savior. Jesus came to this earth to be your Savior. Jesus died on the cross to be your Savior. Jesus went down into the grave to be your Savior. Jesus has resurrected from the grave to be your Savior. He offers you the free gift of salvation. Why? Because He loves you and because He is the Savior. And so He says, Martha says, Yes, Lord, I believe. I believe you're the Lord. You're the Master. I believe you're the Messiah. You're the Savior. She even says, I believe you are the Son of God who comes into the world. She says, Jesus, I know that you're, you're not just a somebody. You truly are the Son of God. You're the eternal one. You're the one that left the glory of heaven. You're the one that has always been and you have come into this world. Jesus has come into this world as the Son of God. Jesus has come into this world as the Savior. Jesus has come into this world as the Lord of Lords and as the King of Kings. See, Martha had a believing. She had a past believing. So let me ask you this. Do you have a believing today? Do you have a past believing? Do you remember... When you first said, I believe. Do you remember the day where you knelt down and you got down on your knees and bowed your head before God and said, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Be my Savior. I believe in you. Do you remember that? Do you have a time that you can go back to do you know in your life that there was a moment that you believed? Friend, you need to know that there's a moment that you believe. I don't want you to leave here today doubting if you believe or not. You need to know that you have a believing in Jesus. That at some point in the past, you placed your faith in him and that you believe. But now I want you to see there's also a future believing. You have a future believing. Verse 24, now I, let me go back. I'm going I'm to start reading here in verse 17, and I'm just going to read on through. Luke, starting in verse 17, it says, When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. For four days, Lazarus has been dead and in a tomb. He's dead. Okay? 
Have you ever seen something that's been dead for four days? My cat brings things to the garage all the time. After about four days, it's getting kind of nasty looking. Okay? Lazarus has been in the tomb. He's been dead for four days. And Jesus arrives. Bethany was near Jerusalem, less than two miles, about two miles away from Jerusalem. Bethany was there. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. See, they really grieved in a great way there. The Jews would come there to the person's house who had been deceased. They would grieve. They would cry. They would mourn. They'd be there to comfort those that were grieving. So all these Jews had come. They'd been crowded into the house. They were just there to support and to serve and to love the family. And it says in verse 20, as soon as Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yet even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. You see, there is a future believing, and Martha had a future believing. Not only did she have a past believing, but she looked ahead to the future and she believed in what God had promised and what she would believe would take place in the future. Verse 24, it says it. She said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. See, that's in the future. We're talking about heaven and the resurrection of the saints of God. Those that, had be, that have believed in Jesus have a hope. See, I have a hope. I have a hope of heaven. I have a future believing. I believe that although I'm living right now in the present, I have a future hope that one day when I die, I'm going to be in heaven with God. See, I, I have a future hope. The Bible calls it a future hope. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says it teaches us about this future hope we have the bible says that jesus is going to come again one day at the last of days he's coming the bible said the trumpet's going to shout it's going to sound and, and there's going to be a shout and jesus is going to step out onto the clouds and the bible says he is literally going to call out of the graves those that have trusted in him those loved ones that you have that have believed in Jesus, they are right now in heaven with God. But one day, Jesus is going to resurrect their bodies out of the grave. They are coming out of the grave. And God's going to take them and he's going to unite their soul with this new glorified body that God's going to give them. Jesus is going to give them when he resurrects them. And here they are and they're going to be together in this resurrection. See, there's a resurrection coming, friends. And I believe in that. See, I have a believing for the future. I have a believing in the past. I have a believing in the future. I believe when I die, I'm going to be with God in heaven. I believe when Jesus comes again, he's going to resurrect the dead bodies out of the ground that have trusted in him. And they're going to have, we're going to be given a glorified body to reign with Christ forever and ever and ever. See, I have a future believing. Martha had a future believing like that. She believed. She said, I believe. I know he's going to be resurrected. And she said, at the last day. See, she believed in the future. We should believe. We should have a past where we believed. We should have a future believing. Believing what's going to take place. I had counseled and met with countless Christians in hospitals, in their homes, that were later in their life, where they were going through some kind of sickness. And I've been with countless Christians like that, and so many of them, it's always an encouragement to my, to my soul and my heart. They share with me how they believe of what's ahead of them. Of the future hope that they have. That when they take their last breath. They'll immediately be in the presence of God in heaven. 
See, you need to have that kind of belief today, friends. You need to have that belief. You need to know because you in the past believed in Jesus, that you now can believe in him for the future hope. There's no doubt about that life is fragile. Life's fragile. You're experiencing it. But let me encourage you. Even through the difficulties of today, you have a hope for the future. You need to believe in God for that hope. You experience loss of loved ones. We all experience the loss of loved ones. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. We grieve. We grieve. But we don't grieve like people that are lost. We don't grieve like people that have no hope. We grieve as those who have hope. Because we know there's a hope. Jesus is our hope. And so even though things around us look difficult, even though we experience the loss of loved ones and things are difficult, we believe in the promise of God. He says, I have a home for you in heaven. We know our loved ones are there if they believed in Jesus. Now, here's the last thing I want to share with you. I want you to know that we have a present believing. This is really the main point of this message. We should have a present believing. See, there's a past. Martha had a past believing, she had a future believing, but she struggled with her present believing. And I would submit to you today, I believe we in this room are like Martha. I believe we struggle with our present believing. We know we believed in the past. We believe for the future. But friends, let me tell you, you are always living in the present. What are you doing in the present? See, our life is lived in the present. Our walk with God is lived in the present. Martha had difficulty in believing in the present. We live life in the present. I want you to see verse 21. Look, look at what happens here. Verse 21, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You see it? What she focused on the past. If you had been here, Lord, Lazarus, he wouldn't have died. Look at verse 24 again. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Where is she? Well, now she's in the future. She says, I know he will in the last day. Verse 39. Look at verse 39. I'm skipping ahead. Now, you know what, let me read this passage all the way for you down to verse 39. Having, verse 28, having said this, she went back and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling for you. As soon as Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw that Mary got up quickly and went out. They followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to cry there. As soon as Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and told him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying, he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. Where have you put him? He asked. Lord, they told him, come and see. That short verse we can all memorize. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Now, let me just stop right there. We, that was a lot. I know why you guys are laughing back there. When I was doing you, they thought I said Jesus swept. They, that's why they're back there laughing. Jesus wept. What was Jesus weeping about? Why was he so troubled in his spirit? Well, a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on that. Now, I'll just tell you what I believe. I believe in this moment Jesus is looking at the destruction of sin upon this world. The tragedy of sin. You know, sin brings this into the world. Because of that first sin, death has entered the world. Because of sin, suffering has entered into the world. Because of sin, we cry and we weep and we, we, we grieve. There's a day coming when there will be no more. The Bible tells us that. 
But right now, that's how it is. That's not how God wants it to be, but that's the way it is because of our sinfulness. And now here Jesus is, and he's seeing the people, their lack of belief, their lack of faith. He's seeing the, the, the destruction of sin. Death has been brought into this world by sin. And he's troubled in his spirit. And, and, he, and he says, why, why, why? Now look at this. Verse 36, so the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, couldn't he who opened the blind man's eyes also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus says, remove the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, told him, Lord, there is already a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Of God. See what Jesus did. Jesus told them. Remove the stone. Remove the stone. That, that, that tomb was cut into a big rock. And they had taken a big stone boulder. And rolled it over the opening there. That body had been. Decomposing there. In that tomb for four days. It had been getting kind of nasty. And. And. Jesus said, remove the stone. And, and what did Martha say? Here's basically, let me give you Brady's modern translation. Please know Jesus. Please know Jesus. No. Don't make us do that. It's already smelly. It's, we've already gone through. We, we've seen him for the last time. We've wrapped him up. We looked at the body, all these things. Listen, just please know. But Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha said, please no. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? That word believe there is in the error's tense, mean, tense meaning it, it's, it's, there's no sense of time with that word. It's, it's special to the Greek. There's no sense of time to that word. He said, didn't I tell you if you believe, no sense of time. Do you believe so didn't I tell you if you believed you would see the glory of God? Now, we're coming to the end here. Just hang with me. Hang with me. Let's go back now and look at all the things that Jesus has said up to this point. Let's go back and look at what Jesus says in verse 23. Jesus says in verse 23, your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Jesus says, look at it, I am the resurrection and the life. Notice what Jesus doesn't say. Jesus doesn't say, I was the resurrection and the life. He doesn't say, I will be the resurrection and the life. Now, will he be? Yes, he will. Was he? Yes, he was. But Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. See, Jesus, he is. It's Present. He is the resurrection and the life. True believing is always accompanied by actions. That's why Jesus tells them, could, Jesus could have, he, he could have raised Lazarus and brought Lazarus out of the tomb any way he wanted to. He could have said, Lazarus, you just float right through the tomb, come out here and stand out here with us. Just go right through the rock. He didn't do that. Jesus could have said, ground, you open up, swallow that big rock out of the way to open the tomb up so I can call Lazarus out. He didn't do that. Jesus could have pointed his finger. That rock could have just bro broken up into a thousand little pieces right there before their eyes. And Jesus could have said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus would have come out. But Jesus didn't do that. Why? Because believing, true believing, is always accompanied by action. It's always accompanied by faith. God is calling us to grow our faith in him, to grow in our believing of him. So he gives them an opportunity to grow in their believing. He gives Martha an opportunity to grow in her believing. He says, remove the stone. They had one thing they needed to do. They needed to go up there and remove the stone, believing what Jesus was going to do. You see, when I was last week, Brother Holly Miller told you it, 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 it was a joke, but it wasn't a joke. I ran out of gas with him in, in my truck with me. We were pulling up the ramp on Hickson Pike and Saudi Daisy, taking him uh, to where he was staying. And I ran out of gas. 
I immediately picked up my phone and called my dad. I said, Dad, I've run out of gas. Get you a gas can out here as fast as possible. He said, okay. It hung up. Right after I hung up, here comes a man in a truck. He rolls down his window beside us. He says, y'all got a problem? We say, yeah, we got a problem. I've run out of gas. He said, well, I just live a few minutes down the road, and I've got a gas can. Let me go get that and bring that here to you. I said, okay, that'd be great. I said, you got gas, don't you? Yeah, I've got gas. Well, I called my dad right back immediately. He said, Dad, don't worry about coming anymore. There's a, there's a nice guy. He, he's volunteered to go get it. But you know what I did? See, I called my dad. I, I had to do something. I called my dad back and said, don't come. Why did I tell him not to come? Because I believed the other man was going to come. If I didn't believe the other man was going to come, I wouldn't have called him back. I'd have just let my dad come on out here. But I believed the word of that man. I believe that man was being truthful and honest when he said, I, I live right down the road. I'm going to go get a gas can and I'm going to come back. So I picked the phone back up and I called my dad and said, Dad, don't come anymore. See, believing always is accompanied by action. It's always accompanied by a response. God calls us to believe in him and to believe in him by faith. He calls us to action. Faith without works is dead, James says. Listen, that's what Jesus is calling us to. By the way, that guy that came and helped me out when he brought that gas can back, he's the owner of Steve's Landing. So I'm going to tell you, go up there and eat at Steve's Landing. Tell, and tell him, thank you for helping our pastor out. He's the one that ran out of gas. Jesus says, remove the stone. See, you grow and you're believing by being obedient to God. Obedience to his word. Verse 41. So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing here, I said this so that they may believe you sent me. After he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out hand and foot with linen strips and with his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, hit them, unwrap him and let him go. Jesus desires to grow our believing in him. Many of you in here, you have a past believing. You have the day you surrendered your life to Jesus. Many of you in here, you really don't struggle a whole lot with having a, a belief for that future of what, what Jesus is going to do. Take you to heaven. My question is, what are you doing right now in the present? See, we are living in the present. And Jesus is calling us to live by faith, to walk by faith, to believe in him daily. What do you need to believe Jesus in today? Where do you need Jesus to show up in your life today or you're going to be in a heap of trouble? I know there are problems in this room because there's problems in all of our lives. I know some of you are struggling in relationships, in relationships to your kids, in relationships to your spouse, in relationships to your parents. And you need Jesus to step in and perform a miracle and to do something. Jesus, he can do it. I believe Jesus will do it. The question is, will you remove the stone? Will you grow in your believing? Will you respond to him? Listen, some of you have sin in your life that has a stronghold on you, and you need that removed. Jesus can remove it from you, but he says, I want you to do something. And what he wants you to do to grow in your believing is to repent of that. It's as simple as that. To turn from that sin, admit that sin to him, confess that sin to him, and ask him to change you. See, that's removing the stone out of the way, saying, Jesus, come in here and you take hold of my life. What sin is in your life that's holding you back today? 
Some of you have a great sin in your life today that's holding you back. Will you believe Jesus to come in and perform a miracle? Will you roll the stone away repenting of that sin? You need to start believing right now where you are at. Right now where you're at. You're having trouble in your, your finances. And you're trying to figure out what you're to do financially. Have you considered what God tells us to do? Have you considered being obedient to Jesus? Friend, if, if, you, if you are not obedient to Jesus, it's going to continue to be chaos for you. True believing is always accompanied by obedience to God and His Word. Obedience to God and His Word. Let me ask you this. Are you willing to believe God when He says, give sacrificially to me, give a tithe, give an offering to me? Let me ask you, how many of you in here today, you don't give? You don't give to the Lord financially. And if you wonder why, you struggle in some areas. God says, remove the stone. Do what I tell you to do. Believe in me. See, we can say we believe in God as much as we want. But do we really believe if we're not obedient? Do we really believe God if we're not obedient to his word? Do we really believe God if we refuse to repent when he says repent? Do we really believe God if we refuse to give when he says give? Do, do we really believe God when he says raise your kids this way, bring them to church, get them engaged in church and walking in the fear of the Lord? Do we really believe him for our family? If we refuse to do what he says we're to do with our families. We can say we believe until we're blue in the face. Believing is always accompanied by action. It's always accompanied by faith. That's why Jesus says here to these people. He says, I'm about to perform a miracle, but I want you to do something. Remove the stone." And that's where Martha had trouble, didn't she? She said, oh no, Lord, please no. Anything but that. What in your life right now are you saying, oh no, Lord, anything but that? God's calling some of you to the ministry. He's calling somebody in here to the ministry. He's calling somebody in here to be a missionary. But you're saying, oh no, Lord, anything but that. I believe, I just don't believe right there. Some of you, God's calling to start seeking Him in a new way. Seriously seeking after His heart and His will for your life and surrendering your life to Him. With Jesus being Lord, you say, Lord, you say, God, I believe you, but I can't give that up. I can't give that up. Jesus says, remove the stone. Remove the stone. How do you grow when you're believing? How do you grow when you're believing? By being obedient to God and his word. It's, it's really simple. Be obedient to God and his word. And as you are obedient to him, uh, you see God changing your life. You see God answering things that you needed answered. Your believing will continue to grow. And let me just say this as we close. From now until we die or Jesus returns, we should all be growing in our believing. Father, 
Thank you for sending us your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sin. Lord, you've called us to believe in you. You've called us to believe for salvation. You've called us to believe in our sanctification, that is, as God, you are growing us daily. We are to keep believing. God, we believe in this future hope that we have, but God, we know right now we're living in the present. This is what we have. This is where we are living. This is what we are doing, God. There are people with all kinds of issues right now, and I believe, Jesus, the answer for those issues is trusting in you with them. Actually believing by faith, not just saying I believe, but being obedient in what you are telling them to do. Lead us during this time, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you would please stand to your feet. This is a time for you to respond. Maybe you need to come talk with me. You have a decision to make. You come talk with me about that. Maybe you just need to come pray. Whatever it is, please come right now. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. so awesome. Lord, we pray that it's been honoring to you. God, help us in our unbelief. God, we believe, but we need to believe more. Help us in our unbelief. 
Help us to believe in those areas that are so difficult for us. Help us to surrender everything to you. Help us to forsake the world, to follow you in obedience. God, help us to not care what other people think, not care what Facebook friends look and think. God, help us just to, to be obedient to you, to follow you in all things. God, help us to do what's right, even when it's hard. Even when it seems impossible. So many, in our, so many things in our life, God, seem impossible. God, if we'll just be obedient to you, you say all things are possible. Jesus, you raised a dead man back to his feet. Lord, you can, you can raise all kinds of things in our life. Anything you want to. But Lord, we need to learn from this passage that so many times before you'll raise something up before you'll bring life you'll raise the dead back to life so many times God you say first you call us to remove the stone to be obedient to you God help us in that as we leave and it's in Jesus name I pray Amen. I want to thank you for being here today. God bless you. We are dismissed.